We start off these conversations, um, it's not really like a, a, a formal approach, like a, sure. I'm sort of some, some sort of presenter. I'm like, hey guys, welcome to, um, you know, we just have a conversation. Um, in fact, some of the guys I think have started recording um, the whole interview, I'm assuming, right? Cool. Um, so I just want to start off by actually thanking you for, you know, giving me the time to speak to you. I know this is the first time I'm, um, I'm connecting with you, I'm sitting down with you. And um, it's such an honor to, you know, to have, um, I guess, this time with you because, I, I mean, the, you're such a huge inspiration to the kids, you know, which is obviously leading me to my first question because, um, you know, when you sort of like look back at, at, at like how far you've come, you know, you know, what goes through like your, your head, you know, how do you feel? Um, because, yo, man, like I said, you, like you're such a, like a huge inspiration to you know, young kids out there that are trying to, you know, get to your, to your level. Sure. You know, so what? So how do you feel when you look at, look look at how far you've come? Uh, well, what I can say, I think I'm I'm proud of myself, man, because I didn't think yeah. that I would reach this far, because I'm coming from a small township in Durban, it's called Claremont. Before I even started making a poem, I was uh, making beats for my cousin. Yeah, he was a rapper and. Uh, he got me the software, I fell, and... I start. <laughs> basic, like, the basic starts, like... And, I mean, before, like, you know, the, the camera started rolling, I, I, I told you about, like, you know, I'm so interested in hearing, uh, you know, that story about, you know, you making beats, mm -hmm. like, hip-hop beats specifically for your cousin, you know? Um, but the fact that people, like, consider you, like, the gum king, mm -hmm. it's like the contrast, bro, like, you know, you start off with the hip-hop vibe, but then... You know, you're taking over the, the, the gorms, you know, you have taken over. You know, what, like, what did you learn, like, from that, you know, from those moments with your cousin that, you know, you probably adopted or still adopt right now? I think at that time I was confused what I wanted to make. Yeah. So I was trying different sounds. I started with hip hop and then from hip hop I was doing tribal house, from tribal house, deep house. Yeah. I was confused. And then when I heard the first track by uh, Naked Boys, it's called it Too Easy. I don't know if you still remember this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the first track that I heard, which was Broken Beats. Oh. It was like, bah, 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 bah. And then I wanted to do something similar to that. Okay. And then I started making a bunch of tracks. And then I started giving it to my friends. Mm. And then, yeah, it's like Dumanja. Yeah, and I heard like, uh, obviously like the, the club uh, Uhuru. Yeah. Was where like uh, yeah, was, talk to me about like the, those moments, bro. Because I'm trying to imagine like okay, like it's a club. Mm -hmm. Is that where like your music started, like yeah. blowing up? In Claremont, that's where my music got popular yeah. first. And then um, Uhuru was the only club that I knew. Uh, I knew in in in, uh, in in Durban because I I was I was still young at that time. Mm. I think I was like 15 or 14 years old. Mm. And when my wait, Joe, so wait. So you were 15, 14 in the club? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend Tempo was a resident DJ at that sure, place. Sure, sure. He would always come and fetch me and take me to that place. And then I would teach myself how to DJ, uh -huh. play early. And then I would, I, would, I would stay at the club until late. Uh -huh. And then I would hear people playing my music at the club. And That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy, and then bro. I had to uh, teach myself how to DJ, and I started getting gigs uh, around Durban. Uh -huh. There was this club called Fifty Eight, uh -huh. and there's another club called Spank, and then that's when. That's where my, my, my name started getting popular. Uh -huh. I started playing in town in Durban. There's uh -huh. a club called Spank. They were playing only gum the whole night. Uh -huh. So yeah. I mean, how did you? I'm um, sort of like. Um, or your thinking process behind building your brand, because I can imagine as a young kid, you know, having records being played in clubs, etc., and obviously getting gigs. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people trying to do this, what you're doing right now, but then only a selected few sort of like understand, you know, how they to build a brand properly. Mm -hmm. So how was your approach with regards to, you know, making sure that, you know, people knew your name or people remembered your name, let me rather say. Um, I, I used to use, uh, uh, taxi drivers, I would just give Oh, that's taxi that's, drivers. Yo, that's fine. That's a marketing <laughs> crazy dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like in Durban, it's a big thing with the uh, taxi culture. They have like the big sound systems and 
people who just pay the, the driver to just drive around the city to just listen to music. Oh. So I'll just give uh, taxi drivers my music and that's how my music got popular so easy in Durban. And then I yeah. uh, still remember I was, I think I was doing grade 10 uh. and I, I got a message from a guy from London. Bro, you in grade 10, you get a message from guys from London. You lied. <laughs> Yeah, no ways, bro. He, he wanted to uh, do an EP with me, and I didn't trust that guy at, at that time. I can imagine, yeah. yes, yeah. And, and then 2014, when I finished my trick, um, I started. Oh, OK Mountain Cookhead went to London, and my favorite club, they were playing my music in, La in London. Mm. And then he tweeted about me, so you in by army. And and then I bought him a little tweet, so I'm digging him. And then when I was like, what kind of book is I chose a kitchen house. And when I was like, kitchen house, it was one time. And then I went to the little gig, Cape Town. And that's when I met T. Black Mage. Like so that's, that's a crazy story. Um, yeah. And you look at like your, the way your, your, your brand is established internationally. Um, you've been to a variety of countries, you know, played gigs overseas. Did you sort of like um, expect you that your music would reach that that level coming up? Yeah, I did. From the straight, from straight <laughs> up? Yeah, since yeah. it's their school, so my born obviously. So my music is being played a lot overseas. Sure, sure. And I knew it for sure I'm going to go overseas. Mm. But I don't know how because I didn't have a team at that time. Sure. So I didn't have a manager. Independent. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm going to ask you to name a figure and what was it. But then how do you prepare for that? Because I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, right? Like if I was like that young and I had to reach or I had or I had to reach internationally, I feel like mentally you have to prepare yourself. Mm. I probably would have cried in my bedroom on myself <laughs> stage before, you know what I mean, before I took that first flight. Um, you know, how did you prepare for that role? Because I can't imagine that it, w it was that easy for you to adopt this new level, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I think, I think I was ready mm. to mm. but I wasn't ready to travel alone, mm. yeah, to go overseas by myself. Mm. But I was lucky because I had an uncle um, along the line the airport, yeah. and I was staying at his place. So yeah, he took care of me for a month. Wow. In that. So yeah, everything was easy. And then the next year, 2017, everything just went up. I started doing my own tours. Mm. Uh, I went to in New York. I did mm. Mama Puppet PS1, Afro Park, New York, um, Amsterdam Festival. Mm. Uh, yo, ish, my name. Bro, so you had like you had like guys in, in like Japan because you mentioned Japan. Um, uh, you had guys in Japan dancing to your to music like that. That's they crazy, dude. That you lie. Yeah, <laughs> Japan, like Japanese, make no, oh, yeah, that you blowing my mind. But, but anyways, leading to my like my next question, um, with regards to the challenges, like you know, obviously we see like the good stuff, uh, mm. most of the time as fans, you know, we see the smiles, the international trips, you know, the uh, accolades, you know, the the new levels you reach, the collaborations. But uh, let's talk about like the challenges that you have had to face to reach to, I mean, to reach this new level. Uh, or, or to reach this big of a level that you're operating under. You know, what did you have to conquer to, you know, to make your dreams a reality? Yo, I had to push myself because I, I didn't think that my music was gonna go overseas, mm. and I used every website that I can that I can to upload my music. And mm. the crazy part is that they found my music on a website called Kasi MP3. Oh yeah, I know that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I used to upload my music there, and they used to promise us they were gonna give us money. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy when I started getting calls and messages from different people from mm. around the world. Mm. They they wanna book me, you know. Yeah. I mean, what what sort of like mistakes um, did you make in the past that you perhaps? Um, you know, have learned um, from and still adopt today that perhaps maybe a kid that's mm. listening to this might, you know, adopt yeah. too, you know? 20, 2015, when I started working with Black like Major, mm. and I didn't think that I was ready, and 
I think I missed like two shows for Red Bull. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I thought that the guys would never work with me again. Mm. But I think I was young at that time and I just took everything light. Mm. You know, I missed like two or three shows. And yeah, I had to change. Yeah. Uh, yo, yeah, yeah, I can, I can respect that, bro. Um, your relationship with Adidas, man, like it, it, it just seems like a, just like, like a good relationship. I mean, I spoke to Shekana before you, and I was just like, the way that the brand just supports you guys, it's so organic. Um, um, you know, it, it just seems like a, like a, like I said, a seamless relationship. What do you, what would you say like makes your partnership with Adidas like a, almost a perfect one? Mm. It is perfect because mm. they came, they came to me when my my career just started. I think that was like 2015, mm. 2016. Mm. And yo, they helped with everything. Mm. Even the trip that I took to the Grammys, the other ones who paid for Oh, trip. okay, okay. And some of the music videos, they helped me to pay, mm. to pay for that, so yeah. Because I, I, I remember listening to like, Anywhere You Go, uh, with Shekana, right? Mm. I was like, yo, this is some different stuff. Like, I've never seen a brand like um, support um, local artists like this. Yeah, you know, so I was trying to think, to, like, yeah. You, you got us together to, uh. to, to, to work on a track. Uh. Yeah. Yo, man, shout out to, to Adidas, bro. Um, next question, like the, the purpose behind your music, right? Like, I usually I ask questions like, um, like this to artists, just so I can just find out, you know, what really drives them to do what they do. Um, you know, some people make music as a hobby. You know, some people make music as uh, some sort of therapy, mm. as they purpose. You know, some people make music to inspire other people. Uh, what would you say is the purpose behind your music? Why are you doing what you're doing? I think I think I'm doing music because I love it, and it's like a job for me. Yeah, it is a job because yeah. I'm not doing anything else besides music. Um, uh, yeah, I can say music saved my life because I was in the brightest student in school shout out bro so yeah that's fire um the covid the covid situation i have to ask that <laughs> one you know what i mean it's, uh 2020 obviously uh you know became super weird when that happened but uh, i want to actually find out about like how you you know took advantage of the situation mm -hmm. um i ask uh, this question a lot of times to artists as well where i ask them like how do they you know um, handle the whole lockdown situation you know, some artists took the time to you know work on their music, make sure it's perfect. Some took the time to chill. You know, I know you took some family time as well, mm -hmm. but then uh, besides obviously the family time, how did you, you know, handle um, you know this given time, you know, unexpected given I was, time? I was happy when the lockdown started. Everybody was happy. <laughs> Everybody was happy. See that. Yeah, because I've been traveling for like four years now, mm. and I didn't get a chance to just see in the studio and work on my music. Mm. I, always, I always make music on the road, like mm. on a plane or airport or a hotel. Mm. So yeah, for me, I think I was happy when lockdown started. Mm. Yeah, it got crazy. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> still going crazy, by the way. But mm. um, my final, final question, I mean, you mentioned, you know, Afropunk. This, this one's for me, bro. Um, mm. When you were Afropunk, and you were performing, um, your set was just uh, in between Pusha T and Tyler. Yo, how, how was that like? <laughs> Let me, just give me some. Yo, man. How, how was that one like? It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that yeah. at that time because that happened 2017. Mm. And, you know, being in New York backstage with those artists and there's nobody stopping you, you can just go to them and. Yo, was, was, was it like that? Yeah. Okay. Everything was so easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I met Taylor and uh, Chris Rock. I saw the picture. Yeah, I saw yeah. the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was really a good experience for me because yeah. uh, I get to see all the people that I see on TV. Like. Hey, man, thank you so much, bro. I think that's it for me, man. I really appreciate uh, the time and I appreciate the fact that you're inspiring all of us. You know what I mean? Thank you so much. Um, that's it. We're done.